when a person's in a state of freeze, it, they're telling you that they are recruiting two defense systems. They're recruiting a mobilization system and an immobilization system. And they're basically just staying alive. They're not, in a sense, doing anything other than just attempting to survive. And the only way to kind of get people out of that is really through what I would say cues of safety. Now, you can't give them cues of safety in the traditional sense of direct face-to-face -face eye contact because their nervous system will respond to that as intrusiveness with, because of proximity. They don't want anything proximal to them. However, the reduction of stimulation might be helpful, make the room quieter. The enhancement of intonation in one's voice might be helpful. Um, basically, the nervous system is overwhelmed with cues of defense. And the only way to turn that off is to do two different things. Remove cues of, of activity and energy and potentially intrusiveness, and to try to sneak in cues of safety, which would be intonation of voice, would be the only way you could do it, uh, or one of the only ways you could do it. And that would be uh, perhaps with vocal music, perhaps just kind of like quieting the place down. So if the person's in those tents, you might in a sense, start using a more hyperprosodic voice, almost, but being very careful not to mimic how you talk to babies or cats and dogs, because the person might see that as being minim minimizing or dismissive of who they are. So you want to, in a sense, change how you are breathing in the presence of another. You want the breaths to be calmer. You want to give signals that you are safe and that you're not angry or disappointed in them. Remember, when the body is in that state, that body is in the state of profound autonomic defense. So it's looking for a cue to disappear even more. So to change or reach a person in a free state is, that it, I'm going to say it's almost a hypothetical question because it is a difficult task to achieve. Because we are human beings, and what that means is we have sensitivities to triggers as well. And if a person who is next to us is in a state of freeze, they're sending cues to us that our body really doesn't like. So we have to, in a sense, move into a very strange state, which is a state of both self-compassion, where we acknowledge that we are a human being reacting to those cues, and a, and a sense of compassion for the client or for the person who you're trying to be helpful to. And once you get into this other sense of the ability of both self-compassion and understanding of your own reactions and a respect for the reactions of the others, then you can kind of override <laughs> those bodily feelings and you start realizing that your role is to de-escalate uh, uh, that individual's defense systems. Uh, in a sense, it's almost like a Star Trek metaphor where they're using uh, energy shields uh, to protect these, the starship.